On the wild west coast of Ireland in County Sligo stands one of the most beautiful examples of Ireland's ancient monastic culture. The Drumcliff Cross was carved out of stone by highly skilled craftsmen over 1,000 years ago. It, it's unparalleled in its beauty. Uh, um, um, stripped down, it has images from the Old Testament and the New Testament, but it's a riot of decoration. Every single panel is filled, no panel is left, is left blank. It's unique in the series of Irish High Crosses, so they must have got the inspiration from perhaps looking at a page of a manuscript, or maybe the craftsman actually travelled from Europe in the 9th century to come to the east of Ireland and perhaps somebody made his way down to the west of Ireland. This beautiful and intricate cross was the centrepiece of the monastic settlement, taking pride of place in the monastery. And monasteries at the time were hugely important places. You must think there was no town in Ireland until Dublin in 1841. And before that, the monasteries were the biggest centres of population because they were the centres of learning. They were the places to which the students came from abroad, and uh, it was a very, very interesting period up to the 8th, 9th century AD. And hence, that's why we get the treasures of Ireland include the Ardar Chalice, the Book of Kells, the High Crosses. These monastic treasures were not just decorative, they also fulfilled another purpose. The High Cross themselves are like teaching tools, where you can see on the East Face, we have the Old Testament scenes, on the West Face, the New Testament scenes, and they were like an open book where people gathered around as we have this morning. The tourists gathered to see the beauty and the craftsmanship of the High Cross itself. I mean, this, these, are, these are Old Testament scenes on the East Face. Adam and Eve, uh, Cain killing Abel. Just a stone's throw from the Drumcliff Cross is the grave of one of Ireland's most famous sons. Poet W.B. Yeats had a great love for the county of Sligo. His great-grandfather had been the rector in this very church and the magic of the place inspired him throughout his life. He says in the poem, he says, he actually says it in autobiography, you know, he gives it direction. He says, bury me up there in the old cemetery in Rockbrun, south of France, temporarily until things quieten down and then take me all bones back to Sligo. So in the poem he says, uh, under bare Ben Bulbin's head in Drumcliff Churchyard yet is laid. This is his own direction. The Wild Goose Drumcliff Cross was carved in clay over 40 years ago by Kathleen Smith. Travelling the pre-motorway roads of Ireland, she drove from West Cork to Sligo to make the replica. The piece was cast in bronze by Wild Goose co-founder Brian Scott McCarthy in their Kinsale Studios in West Cork. Forty years later, the Wild Goose studio is still casting bronzes in Kinsale and the Drumcliff Cross is sold all around the world. <laughs>